and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. Autumn? Are you almost here? Yes, you are. Today I'm going to be doing a, um, a video that started by my good pal and friend, Mercedes, from Mercy's Bookish Musings. I've seen Jen do this and I've seen Russell um, at Ink and Paper Blog do this and I just feel like it's a really good video and it is a video, you, may, you might have guessed from the title of the video, five five star books that I think I've got on my shelf so if you haven't seen any of those videos you should watch them I'll link some of them down below um these are five books that I've pulled off my shelves that I haven't read yet that I think are going to be five star books for me I've got a non-fiction in there I've got a YA in there I've got a classic in there and I've got two sort of literary fictions and just based on what I've heard other people saying or based on um stuff that I've read of theirs in the past Daphne de Maurier alert. Um, I think that these are going to be five star books. So I will start with this is the non fiction book, Bridget Christie, a book for her and for him if he can read. Now, this was sent to me by the Willoughby Book Club. Um, they sent me a box and um, said, Would I like to offer my viewers, hi viewers, um, a 10% off um, fee from their subscription service? So if you do, I'll make a link of it down below. And I said that I, um, and in, in, exchange for that they would send me a book um, that they'd picked for me based on my goodreads and my reading habits and the fact that I said I liked non-fiction feminist fiction they sent me this and I've never heard this I've never heard of Bridget Christie and it sounds amazing so I'm aware that a lot of this video is going to be me reading off the back of the books because I haven't read them yet but it says here Bridget Christie is a stand-up comedian, idiot and feminist. On the 30th of April 2012, a man farted in the women's study section of a bookshop and it changed her life forever. A book for her details Christie's 12 years of anonymous toil in the bowels of stand-up comedy and the sudden epiphany that made her unbelievably one of the critically acclaimed British stand-up comedians this decade, drawing together the threads that link a smelly smell in the women's studies section to the global feminist struggle. So I feel like this is going to be really good. I love feminist non-fiction. I love um, studies on gender, etc. So I just feel like they picked so so bloody well um, and I feel like this is going to be a five star for me. The next one is um, it's a bit of a cheat really because it is actually a book I've got out from the library at the moment however it is on my library shelf um, and this is based on I've, I've heard people mention this book many times but my sister is actually currently reading this and says that it's fantastically phenomenal and that is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Septi Septis I think this is this so this is a YA book um, about and I'll, I'll read you the book War-torn Germany, four young people, four dark secrets. They come from different lands, but each of them is hunted and haunted by tragedy, lies and war. As thousands of refugees flock to the coast, desperate to escape the advancing Red Army, the paths of four young people converge and are all hoping to board the Wilhelm Gustloff, a ship that promises safety and freedom, yet not all promises can be kept. And um, this is inspired by the worst disaster in maritime history. So my sister Charlotte's reading this at the moment. She says it's completely, it's so readable. And also because it's multiple perspectives so and they're really short chapters. So for instance, there's a character called Florian, spoiler alert, um, and Joanna. She says you get to the end of a chapter and you're like, well, I need to know what happened to Joanna. So I'll read the next three people. Oh, we're back to Joanna. Well, I need to know what happened to Florian. So, and she just said it's a complete page turner. Um, so I've been looking forward to um, to reading this for a while because, I've, as I said, I've um, I've heard a lot of people mention it, but I feel like this would probably be a five star for me. So that's that. Love multiple perspective, etc. So the next one is. Um one that is actually on my um, my TBR of TBRs um, at the moment. So at the, begin at the end of last year, I love watching um, BookTuber's favourite books of the year. And I, well, on watching all of those videos, I noticed that a lot of books that people were mentioning I had on my shelves. So I was super excited. So I was like, I'm going to make a TBR video based on people's best books of 2016 that I have on my shelves. And one of those books that come up in a few videos, but namely Jen's, um, is The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. So first of all, this cover is absolutely amazing amazing um, and I am currently reading um, Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters which is set in a similar time no it's not it's set this is set a hundred years earlier than Sarah Waters and Tipping the Velvet um, but I've been meaning to read this for such a long time I love a bit of sort of cozy historical fiction this sounds like it's got some real like background darkness going on it sounds like the character is it's told from the, the main character is a, a female which I love and here it says here Georgian London in the summer of 1763 at 19 and Jacob is awakened to the possibility of joy when she meets Fub the butcher's apprentice and begins to imagine a life of passion with him the only daughter of well-to-do parents and lives a sheltered life her home is a miserable place though her family want for nothing her father is uncaring her mother is ailing and the baby brother who taught her to love is dead 
Unfortunately, her parents have already chosen a more suitable husband for her than Fub, but Anne is determined young woman with idiosyncratic moral compass. In the matter of in the matter of pursuing her own happiness, she shows no fear or hesitation, even if it means getting a little blood on her hands. Oh, it sounds like it's going to be amazing. So I've been sort of waiting for the autumn to come because I feel like this is a perfect autumn book. Maybe I'll start it on autumn cosy reading night. Who knows? Um, and the next one is, as I said, that was an autumn book. This is a summer book and I'm running out of time to read this. Um, Mercedes and Simon have both absolutely raved about this. It is The Trouble with Goats and Sheeps. Uh, sheeps? Sheep. <laughs> The plural of sheep is not sheeps, um, by Joanna Cannon. So this is set in the summer of 1976, and it says, Mrs. Creasy is missing and the avenue is alive with whispers. As the summer shimmers endlessly on, I love that word, I love that sentence, 10 years old Grace and Tilly decide to take matters into their own hands. But as doors and mouths begin to open and the cul-de-sac starts giving up its secrets, the amateur detectives will have to find more than they could have imagined. So yeah, set in the summer. Sounds like it's gonna be amazing. I've heard Mercedes and Simon both love this. Mercedes gave it five stars. I can't remember what time he gave it, but they, I remember they both raved about it and very much looking forward to getting to that. I want to read that soon because soon I'll be going, oh, I can't read that now because it's uh, not the summer anymore. So maybe I'll even pick this up next. Who knows? And then the last book, of course, is a Daphne du Maurier book. Of course. Now, I've currently got one, two, three, four, five Daphne du Maurier books, six, including this one, um, six Daphne du Maurier books on my um, shelves waiting to be read. Um, and I I feel like Daphne, du Daphne, as I'm mates with her now, so Daphne, um, is autumnal and winter reading. It's very much cosy reading. Um, and I picked up all the books and I looked at the back of all of them. I've got a massive stain on my coffee table there. What on earth could that be? Um, I picked up the back of all of them and they all sound amazing, but the one that I thought, mm, so the chances are I'm going to give them all five stars because I just adore her, like, but the one that I wanted to show, because I thought I could just show you five of my Daphne du Maurier books, but I'm not going to do that. And the one that I, um, I'm probably going to go to next is The Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier. This has also been made into either a um, TV adaptation or a film with Andrew Scott in it. And Andrew Scott is my favourite actor of all time. He plays Moriarty in Sherlock. He's in Pride. I've recently seen a film with him in called Handsome Devil. He is just my favourite actor of all time. I think he can turn his hand to anything. He is an incredible actor. Absolutely amazing. And his face and his voice acting is amazing as well. I've um, He's in Locke. So um, I don't know if anyone has seen... I'm just talking about Andrew Scott. We're not even going into this at the moment. Has anyone seen Locke? You know that film that's got Tom Hardy and he's just driving in his car for um, 90 minutes and that is literally it. There's nothing else going on. Well, Andrew Scott is um, someone that he works with and his voice acting is amazing. I've listened to an audio play from Audible um, that he's in. He's just wonderful. And I've heard he's in the adaptation of this. So The Scapegoat, and I will read you the back here, and it starts, uh, and it says, by chance, two men, one English, the other French, meet in a provincial railway station. Their resemblance is uncanny and they spend the evening talking and drinking. It is not until John wakes up the next morning that he realises his French companion has stolen his identity and disappeared. So John steps into the Frenchman's shoes and faces a variety of perplexing roles as owner of a chateau, director of a failing business, head of a fractious family and master of nothing. Mmm, exciting. Um... So yeah, very much looking forward to that and I feel, feel like that will be five stars. So those are some books that I think will be five star books. Um, let me know if you have read any of these and what star rating you gave them. I would be very, very interested to hear. Um, and if you've got any five star books on your shelf, um, I would really, uh, this isn't a tag video or anything, it's just Mercedes, Mercedes inspired idea um, that I've stolen from her.